Drinking in college is a deviant behavior that has almost been normalized by mainstream media. When most people think of college, it is normal to associate this drinking culture into the pursuit of higher education. The Hollywood stereotype of college commonly consists of late night parties, binge drinking, and maybe some consequences that come after. However, what most people may not realize is that drinking in college can be an extremely risky procedure to everyone, not just the drinkers. This is College Drinking by Elisha Inlow. Did you know that more than half of college students drink moderately or completely abstain from drinking? That can be hard to believe for some people, especially those who trust the TV shows they are watching for accurate information. But it has been statistically proven in many research findings that there has actually even been an increase in students choosing to remain completely abstinent. However, there's still a large portion of college students who participate in binge drinking, and that number has remained constant over several decades. For those who may not know, binge drinking is men who consume five or more alcoholic beverages consecutively, whereas women it is the consumption of four or more alcoholic beverages. The difference between moderate drinkers and binge drinkers? According to the text, Deviant Behavior, Edition 11, by Theo Taylor and Schwartz, is that binge drinkers are drinking solely to get drunk, whereas moderate drinkers, well, they're drinking for fun. Binge drinking in college can be attributed to many different variables. Some of the most common include excess stress. This can come from many different places, such as work, school, or even your home. Social pressures to fit in. Sometimes you just want to feel less antisocial. And even just simply lack of information like overestimating peer drinking may make you think that you can drink more. A study conducted by Dr. Daphne E. Peterson at the University of North Dakota found that undergraduate students who reported stress arising from relationships, interpersonal conflicts, and conflicts in a living situation were more likely to binge than those suffering from academic stress. This iterates that interpersonal stressors are more likely to lead to binge drinking in the college environment. Furthermore, positive expectations are also known to reinforce this binge behavior. Much of what is displayed on television can be disregarded as an exaggerated fabrication of actuality. However, the implication of extracurricular groups such as social fraternities Increasing binge drinking in college students may have some truth to it. In the study, the role of positive alcohol expectancies and underage binge drinking among college students, it was concluded that college students drink with their positive expectations that it will facilitate social engagement, their bonding with other students, or even enhance their sexual appearance. In turn, binge drinking is common among those involved socially with college Greek fraternities, sororities, and those who are Greek members. The College Binge Drinker Though anyone can become a binge drinker, a common profile for a college binge drinker consists of the following. Being male. Being Caucasian. Being age 18 to 23. Being an athlete. Being involved in a social fraternity or sorority. As well as prior involvement with risky behaviors such as marijuana and tobacco use. What is so deviant about college drinking? 
When drinking was available to those 18 years old and older, these young adults drank in public. They could be monitored by their parents, healthcare workers, and even the police. These individuals, when they attended college, they were able to practice moderate drinking at school-sanctioned events. However, since the drinking age was raised to 21 in the 1980s, and many colleges have begun to become dry campuses or alcohol-free campuses, many underage drinkers simply went underground, or they hid away from the law and their parents, but now it's not being monitored. Aside from being against the law, in some cases, drinking in college can be extremely risky for more than just those engaging in the drinking. Binge drinkers are more likely to injure themselves or others, get in trouble with the law, ride in vehicles with drivers that are under the influence of alcohol or drugs, or even have academic problems. Along with that, college binge drinkers can have adverse secondhand effects on those around them, such as interrupting another student's sleep or studying session, forcing another student to take care of drunken students, and also humiliating or insulting another student. A study in 2015 by Kabalatunga and McCarthy concluded, the majority of students reported exposure to alcohol secondhand effects, and this exposure was negatively associated with their grades and their overall satisfaction with their school. These results were pulled from a multitude of four-year institutions in the United States, and they display just how diverse the effects of drinking can be on college-age students. Are there ways to combat this deviance in college drinking? The answer is yes. One way would be to rid society of this deviance by simply convincing everyone that it's normal. Because once it's normalized in mainstream society, it's no longer deviant. However, this could prove to be a nearly impossible feat to just go out and get accomplished. So luckily, there are some other ways. Many universities have held alcohol abstinence concerts to try and combat this deviance. However, in the text Deviant Behavior Edition 11, it is mentioned that these concerts didn't really accomplish much at all. However, it continues to explain that in 1996, some sociologists found that many students overestimated their peers' drinking habits, and that caused them to drink more. So by revealing the actual drinking habits, it reduced the amount of excessive drinking. Now using this as an example, it could be possible to reduce the amount of college drinkers by exposing information about the consequences of drinking in college as well. Much like in the example, research has found that many college students overestimate how often alcohol-related consequences are experienced by other students on campus. And they have even rated consequences as more acceptable for others to experience than themselves. This has led to a normative perception of drinking consequences which has contributed to the normalization that occurs when individuals experience negative alcohol-related consequences. So therefore, by exposing the normal occurrence of these consequences, there's an opportunity to further reduce the deviance of college drinking. Thank you.